Hey, what's up guys? I thought in this video, I tried to do some flume sounds, which is something new for me. Um, so I just started with tennis courts and I recreated a few of the synths. Um, I ended up throwing out some of them that I didn't like, but the first one I think sounds pretty close. So there are some cool concepts to go over. So I will start by showing you what I have. So here's the original track. <laughs> And here's where I got it to. So this cool super saw e womp kind of sound. Um, so if you'd like to know the MIDI for this. So these were the notes that I thought were in the progression. You can see that a lot of them are not on the grid. And this was to try and get the right flow that Flume had. Uh, I think one of the things that makes Flume's music so sick is that a lot of the notes are off grid. There's a lot of swing to his music. Um, so you kind of have to move things around, use your ear, but not really rely on the grid too much. So I will take off the processing and then we can go over how to create a sound like this. Okay guys, so the first thing that I did is I just started with a saw. So the first thing that I did is I threw this LFO one on the level and this is to start creating that shape. So I threw it on the Hertz mode and then I'm creating this kind of shark fin type shape to it. Um, and then I just set it to a speed that I thought sounded pretty fitting for the note. Um, so this is what it sounds like with just a saw wave. So I also added in a second oscillator. I chose this weird square shape wavetable and I've been finding a lot of cool stuff in this Animoog science facts, Animoog. I'm not sure if this is a standard folder for Serum or not, but there's a lot of cool wavetables in here. Um, so yeah, I set both oscillators to four on the unison and the detune is pretty high up. Um, a lot of these sounds in Flume Song had a lot of detune. It was kind of a wonky spread out sound. So with those two, it sounds like this. Whereas if I set the detune very low, it kind of becomes more uniform. But when the detune is higher, we get that more flumey type sound. Um, I also added some white noise because I just felt like this needed a, a brighter high end to it. Um, so I threw bright white on there. The LFO is on the level of this as well. I'm sending this to the filter over here and just the noise is going into it so I can high pass it out. So with that noise, it sounds like this. Uh, if that filter was not there, the noise is just a little too loud. We're getting those low frequencies in the noise and I just don't want that. So after this, I threw on some tube distortion and that just kind of dirties it up a little bit and makes it a little bit more distorted. Uh, if I turn this mix up a lot, you can hear the effects. Um, then I threw on a filter and this LFO one is going on the filter as well. And this is just to give us more of that defined wompy flavor. And now we're getting more of that flume type sound where you're, you're throwing those notes up and back. Um, and then a compressor just to control everything. So each note is around the same level. Um, even though they are dynamic sounds, we want them to be around the same level. Uh, so the attack and the release are fairly fast. The ratio is just at four and we're just controlling these sounds. Cool. Um, so the next thing I want to go over is actually something that I did post everything post processing. And this was to get more control over the notes and to try to match the swing and the flavor that Flume had. Um, so you'll see that everywhere this LFO is attached to, I have the aux source as macro one. And what this means is that this knob, which I labeled intensity, uh, determines how much this LFO is actually affecting each note. Um, so depending on where I set this knob, it determines how much this LFO is going to be affecting 
this oscillator, this oscillator, the noise oscillator, and this filter. So this gives me more control over how intense each of those notes are. Um, some of the notes will be a little bit more dynamic or a little bit more abrupt, which gives you a different flavor and a different swing. So I can show you the automation that I have for this. So this is the automation I have for that macro. If I take that off, it just sounds like the notes are pretty dead. There's not a lot of variation in each note. Um, and this is something I've talked about in other videos. It seems that you really need to accent the notes that you're choosing to put into your music. So you can hear with the macro being automated, we're just getting a different type of sound from each note. Uh, and you can also automate in between notes. Uh, for example, right here, the macro is a little lower. So that LFO one is not affecting this note that much, but then it goes up. So at the tail end of the sound, we're actually getting more of that LFO one affecting it. So you can move in between notes. You can do things like just entire notes there, but that really changes the effect of each note and accents them. And it's just how you can get that swing and a little bit more life into your notes. And then in a similar fashion, I use this macro two, and I'm just setting this directly on the LFO one rates. What that allows me to do is automate the rates of this LFO. So some notes will be hitting faster and that shape will be hitting faster. Some notes will be slower. Um, so if I show you that automation, you can see these notes are happening a little quicker. If you look at Flume's wave shapes here, you can see these notes are a little, a little quicker. Uh, this one seems to tail off a little slower. This one's a little slower as well. Uh, so I just try to match that. And so I set the rate a little faster for these first notes, kind of slows down for this third note. So we're getting more of a tail on that. And the same thing here, just faster rates or slower rates. It's just another way you can automate notes. Um, when I was doing this, it kind of made me realize that you know, professional producers, they really see every parameter as something that can be a tool or something that can be manipulated. And for me, I just started with this shape and I was like, yeah, it sounds pretty much the same. This intensity and the rate, it really does do a lot to accent each note and kind of make it feel more live. If I take off that automation, it sounds like this. And then with it on. So subtle changes, but it makes the notes feel like they're doing something. They're not just mechanical. And the last thing that I did, I used this LFO3 and I set it on the fine tuning of this second oscillator. And that's just, just give it some more pitch variation, just some more randomness. Um, so just that oscillator sounds like this. So you can hear the pitch is kind of going up and down, just adds a little bit more interest and another kind of pitchy characteristic to it. So that is everything in the synth. Next thing, I just did some EQ, uh, bumped it in the 1K range, and I did some side EQ to cut off some of the lows. This is something that I would recommend. It seems that the more remakes I do, the more I'm having to do this. It just seems like that very low end, kind of sub uh, under 100 Hertz region, is a uh, low cut in the sides. Most people already know this, but it's a, it's a useful thing to remember. Um, and then I just add some more saturation just to get a little bit more distortion, a little bit more character in there. So with that on, it sounds like this. A little cool. And then um, I threw on some OTT just to smash it a little bit. Um, brings up some of those high-end harmonics, the white noise up top. So that sounds like this. So we're getting a lot of those high-end frequencies now. It just feels a little bit more polished, a little bit more mixed into a actual song. And then this EQ, I think I was just taking out some harshness in this area here. This limiter, I'm just pushing it up so it can kind of match this waveform where each note is kind of hitting around the same level. Cutting off those peaks, just making everything a little bit more squashed. 
And then, yeah, the spectrum just to check out what's going on. And then this compressor is doing some side chaining. But that is pretty much it for this sound. So I tried to create more of the song and I just wasn't really getting the kind of character I liked. So I just went off on this rabbit hole of creating synths. Um, and I created some kind of cool ones, I thought. And these are all variations of this first patch that we did. Um, just different wavetables, different use of the detune, um, different shapes. With this one, I'm just using the envelope one to shape it. And this one's like a very sharp pluck sound, um, kind of a glitchy staccato sound that you'd hear in a lot of flume tracks. And it sounds like this. So using this LFO one, which is the amp uh, envelope of the synth, you can get very tight sounds. If you want to get that kind of staccato sound that Flume has, um, you can just use a, an amp envelope and then find some oscillators that you can create some cool chords with. Um, I like this one because this second oscillator has a lot of high frequency content, a lot of cool harmonics up top. So if I just had this first oscillator, Sounds okay, but then when I add that in, that's one thing I noticed more about Bloom sounds is there are always some cool harmonic details in there. And I always thought it was how you mixed it or how you EQ things. But the more I do this, the more I realize it's, it's really about what the sound is from the start. So things like adding wavetables that have that harmonic detail from the start, that's how you do it. Like you don't do it after the fact, trying to pull up all this stuff. I mean, you can with OTT and EQ and stuff, and that's to kind of polish it. But you really want to start with the harmonic detail from the very beginning. Then here is another little variation. Um, yeah, if I throw that into the beat, you can kind of hear the result that we get. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much it for this one. Um, I'm definitely going to go into some more Flume stuff in the future just because his sound design is really cool. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. I know these videos are becoming more scarce. Um, just been very busy with other work that I'm doing, but I'm going to continue to do this. Uh, thank you guys for your patience and for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. If you want to see more sound design tutorials like this one, check out my channel where I have many videos going over some of the most famous sounds in electronic music. If you are interested in having more hands-on access to the sounds that I recreate, head to my Patreon where you can become a member and download all of the Ableton project files. I also just created a Fiverr, and if you'd like to request a specific sound to be recreated, you can do so there. The link is in the description, and thank you for watching.